<sighs> Evening blaster peeps. Um, I mentioned yesterday that I'd do a comparison. Sorry, a little bit of diff technical difficulties. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do a comparison on the Retro Arms V2 and a Green Future, Green Future V2 CNC box that I've got. Uh, the Green Future CNC box is <coughs> built for um, what well, it was. It's definitely manufactured for AS and the green uh, not the green future the retro box has a few features that i like over the green future box so we'll make a little bit of comparison as to why i prefer the retro arms box over the green future box <clears throat> now they're both rated to handle an m190 uh they both have or the retro box has a 24 month uh replacement warranty guarantee I'm going to start getting notifications all night, so I do apologise if it keeps on beeping away at you. We'll try and work through it. So we'll go through and do the green feature box. Very good finish. Great machining skills in this box. Some of the things that I prefer the Retro Arms box over the green feature box is quick change spring option. It is very, very convenient to have the quick change in regards to swapping springs out not just through modability but just functionality once you start dealing with m150s 160s 170s 190s uh getting this green future box to close with an m190 inside of it is uh very very scary in the respect that if the spring does let go you run the risk of everything just exploding in in your face shims popping out left right and center uh just trying to get the top half to close on it with that amount of pressure inside is a headache at best so i did invest in a couple of these clips which someone in the community tagged me in a post as soon as I saw them I jumped all over them just to help me close these boxes with the very high spring rates in them one thing I didn't like about them as everyone knows I'm not a fan of these bearings these are 9 mil bearings I haven't been able to find locally a 9 mil bushing so we've had to order them specifically from overseas so we can replace them <laughs> We're in the process of replacing these bearings and I was able to get my hands on these retro arms box so I pretty much retired these green future boxes and they just sit in a, my own little personal build box. I don't know what I'm going to do with them but I'm sure I'll work something out in the near future. <laughs> Let's see some comparisons and some things that I like about each of these boxes. So as you can see put them on top of each other or I'll point them out so with your wiring is one of the issues that a lot of people are saying that there's not enough real estate or what I should say what I've found me personally is that there's just not enough real estate to get any wires through here and that little curvature here to have that wire come out the bottom is really hard to get the right profile I've done things <clears throat> like Applied super glue just so that the wires stay down and I can run them tightly around the edge of the box. So, if we have a look at the retro arms box, as you can see, they haven't got that screw hole or bolt hole like the Green Future box right there. So, the wires do come in nice and neatly and they do exit out straight through the bottom. There is no funky little curvature that you've got to work around through here. Another thing that I really like about the Retro Arms box, it's one of my um, favorite features about it, is that little groove right there. So, that tucks those two wires up underneath the pinion gear and puts them right out of the way. How I used to do the Green Future boxes, I mimicked that type of groove and I would machine out that bottom section through here just so that the wires would pop out a little bit at the back here and they would drop inside the box giving us more clearance for the pinion gear so you don't chew out those wires that come across. 
<clears throat> talking about wires and a few other things I like about the Retro Arms box as opposed to the Green Future box is that window. So the window at the back, as you can see, the Retro Arms box. All right, I just muted those notifications. Uh, the Retro Arms box has got a bigger window at the back allowing you to feed those wires through whereas the green future box is really tight and so to get that angle for the wire to come through here and out the back here and you've got to get two of them I usually widen that so I'll machine that out to give me a little bit more real estate this one's already done so we don't even have to do that other things that I like and I've found I've had to do is I've had to modify just slightly that edge there and this little bump here just so that when we use the MOSFETs I find that that really does press hard up against the top um, half of the MOSFET don't particularly like it I like it snug in there so I measured all that out we machine that a little bit off and then come in and just knock that edge off there so it doesn't foul up against the top of the MOSFET whereas with the retro arms box it is not as high so and it's just oh, probably half a mil difference in between there and there as opposed to the green future box and that's just enough where it'll hold the top of the MOSFET down nice and snugly we don't really have to touch that either another thing I like about the retro arms box is that hole there so that hole there I utilize to see meshing in between the oh, let's get it sector gear in the pin and the rack just to make sure that my, my meshing in between that gear and the rack on the ladder is on point um, it just gives us another insight of what's happening inside that gearbox another thing I like is these little ribs here don't know if it's uh, deliberate but I find I put a little bit of grease in these ribs here and then that lubricates this track so as the grease um, starts to get a little bit um, well it melts effectively it will run down and lubricate those tracks through there just through natural gravity I understand that this would come down in through here but I do like that feature so I do put a little bit of grease there call it a feature or not um, I do find that if I do put a bit of grease there then it does lubricate this track and it comes down and it lubricates that bottom section there uh, what else have I found a couple things that I have found is inside here with the retro arms box that I don't like sometimes there's a little bit of a dag inside here can't really get a good view with my oh you might be able to see it I find that that just sometimes on a couple of the boxes there's a bit of a dag inside there that we've got to clean out because it does grab on the fire selector plate and because they're nylon and this is a CNC 775 then it does scratch up the plate a little bit so if anyone's got their hands on a retro arms box just keep in mind that this sometimes has a little dag inside there that you'll have to clean out once you clean that out the fire selector plate moves smoothly through that a couple other differences that i like as well in regards to the charging handle try to get a good profile match here through the top there that's perfect oh that's a bit better where are we there is just slightly there you can see that little bump in the green future box so I'm talking about that bump there I find that that does sometimes prohibit the charging handle from operating properly recessing in uh, and sometimes it can activate the door and it pops it out whereas with the retro arms box you've got a nice groove in there where the charging handle recesses in properly there's not too many differences in regards to design there are little those little 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 differences that I like um, one thing I don't like is not having as much meat on the front of this retro arm box here that's a nice square chamfer whereas this green future box does have a little bit of extra meat there the reason why i like having a little bit of extra meat at the front here is because i have broken gearboxes in the past where they just snap the front of the gearbox off 
granted that they have been cast alley, granted that these are rated to M190. Um, I haven't been able to break either one of these boxes yet, but it's just the safety measure that I like to see a little bit more meat on the front here. Uh, more material means more strength in my opinion. Um, what else? Oh, radiused. This is radiused. A must when we're talking about metal gearboxes. If you radius these corners, you actually dissipate the amount of force where that cylinder, um, <clears throat> that cylinder transfers onto the gearbox when the piston hits the front of the cylinder or the cylinder head and if you radius that then the forces get transferred across that front edge if you don't radius the forces are literally uh, concentrated in that corner advantages of radiusing the back um, I couldn't imagine why you'd want to in regards to all the forces are forward forces but by all means it's always a good idea just to cover all your bases just radius all the four corners if you're using a metal style gearbox whereas green future not radius so you can see the sharp corners that it has and all the forces of the piston hitting the front of the cylinder or the cylinder head is going to be transferred right in those corners and they're really weak points uh, you can imagine how many times that piston will slap up against against the front of the cylinder or the cylinder head and the force is getting transferred into those corners and not getting dissipated across that whole edge so but these are like I keep on saying rated to an M190 both of them are this one comes with a warranty this one not so much obviously because there's no store that actually stocks these so we had to get them in from overseas uh, what other things do I like and I don't like about it um, I suppose that's about it like I said they're relatively exactly the same design it's just little very very minor changes between the retro arms and the green future box that I do like there is a few things about the green future box that I do like over the retro arms uh, one of them is also bolt position what's this one the bottom section so you can see no we'll go for the top one positioning of all your bolts bottom corner at the back of the gearbox and you've got your two at the front with four at the top whereas with the retro arms you've only got three at the top and they've changed the position from the front to the back clearly they've done that so that we didn't have to go through and do the wiring that comes through here giving us a better path for the wires to go as opposed to the green future box having that post there we have to go around it so retro arms have shifted that to the back how is that going to affect structural integrity mm, i think they've got a really good <clears throat> sealing um, tabs on the retro arms box they're all integrated interlocked so they have all these little raised edges and then they've got all these cutouts which are mirrored onto the other side of the box two things that i did notice about the retro arms box is that you've got a hole here and a hole at the back <laughs> And in my eyes, in my industry, when there's two matching holes opposite each other, you tend to put a dowel in there, which would be really, really good, but the box didn't come with dowels. I'm in a position where I've got a box full of dowels, so I can always <clears throat> cut a dowel down and insert two dowels in there, which will just increase strength once again, strength and rigid. Um, and it would just hold that box together so much better as well with a couple of dowels in there. Um one thing I did find weird in regards to bolt position is that it doesn't have one there I uh, don't know why they didn't they opted not to put one there <clears throat> uh, the only reason that I can imagine is one maybe it's not that necessary but then why did green future put one in there and the only um, aside from functionality maybe in regards to legalities they had to make a few changes to get past patents so I keep on harping on about how to change a pattern to get around a pattern you've just got to do 13 changes and um, no legal team can really touch you so maybe that's just one of those 13 changes that they can do 
<clears throat> to get around legalities and being able to print these so that no one with a pattern on a V2 style box can come around and sue your ass. Another thing I do like about these is that they got the bolt holes at the, uh, positions at the bottom to allow for you to have your mag terminal blocks. Whereas with the green future box, they utilize well because this is for a different sport. They don't run mags in that sport, so they didn't have to foresee that. So when we three D print these um, mag terminal boxes, uh, mag terminal holders, we utilize those two front holes there. It's really hard when you take them in and out and everything, because when I did a lot of R and D on this box, dropping in different types of gear sets and different springs, making it very difficult for me to quickly change the spring out through the back. We're constantly undoing those two bolts and popping the casing open. Or the gearbox open we actually destroyed uh the two holes or the two tabs where the mag terminal holder would go and so i had to print a couple extra ones as you can see you can just slightly see some little black markers across here where we're making measurements and how i was explaining to our 3d printer guy josh how i wanted these um mag terminal blocks to sit with the green future because we had so much issues and because they are recessed into the gearbox it makes that even that little bit harder uh, being that these are the only two bolts that hold down that front section I do like to talk every single one of these bolts to exactly what they need to be and that makes it hard when you've got a 3d printed part in between the bolt head and the actual gearbox because it just squishes down on that so I do like the design of having your very the two holes on the back separated from your two holes on the top. Uh, that's about all I've got on these two boxes. All the two differences that I can spot. A couple of things that I really like is obviously the positioning of that groove, how the wires feed through here, the ample room out the back so the wires can come out, the radiusing of for to allocate for the cylinder, um, these little grooves along here whether or not it's a deliberate act but I do like the fact that they if you fill them with grease they should lubricate that um, rail there and the fact that they have changed the design on the back here to allow um, for MOSFETs to fit in a little bit more better um, only thing I don't like about it is that there's not that much ma uh, material at the front here and obviously the spring quick change spring option on the back is gold absolute gold um, to the point where if anyone ever came to me with a gearbox without a quick change on the back I'd happily give them a gearbox with that <laughs> just makes my job so much easier but yeah um, retro arms gearbox is probably my choice well it's not probably my choice it is my choice when you come to CNC style gearboxes their 24 month warranty rated to an M190 quick change you know, I keep on harping on about where the wires um, are routed through the gearbox. That's a big thing for me. I really do like that um, feature. Or oh, interlocking tabs as well. And also these two little holes. Where's the other one? There and there. Which I'll be putting dowel pins in just to ensure that there's even more strength in that gearbox. Which I'm probably thinking was originally the plan. Um, but yeah, that's about it, Blaster Peeps. Thanks for tuning in. Um, might go through and I've got a lot of people asking me a whole heap of random questions through the week. Might do a couple more live feeds and just give my opinions on what everyone has been asking me. Some of them have been batteries. I might quickly touch on that now. So I've got a couple Turnigy batteries here. You know, um, people are running these Turnigy 1.0s, 1.2s. So they've got a 20C with a 40, 40C burst and a 25C with a 50C burst. Um, people are really swearing by these things, which are great because they do slide into the buffer tube. But, you know, you've seen some of my builds where we do external mounted boxes. We do that because I find that using having a better battery in your build is just so much so it just takes so much strain off your build heat generated um, by having a higher c rating you're not actually asking a lot of your uh, uh, battery with a bigger c rating so when i do some r and d's on my builds 
Um, I come in uh, my entry level battery is 11 volt with a 60C and 120C burst. You know, we run 12 to 1s, 13 to 1s, um, high speed, high torques, all sorts of weird and wonderful things off that battery and it doesn't generate any heat whatsoever. Um, I even run uh, setups with the silver wires uh, and doesn't generate heat at all as, all, as, as well. Then we have uh, higher end builds with the DSGs. Um, we've got the Vector DSG coming up, the 12 to 1 D, um, Vector that we run bigger batteries with as well. Uh, so if you're chasing down batteries, l your main concern, in my opinion, should be the C rating. Um, and you should really be entering into buying or finding a battery with a standard C rating, a C rating of 50C to, and then having a burst rating of 100C. I think that should be everyone's entry level battery. Uh, just utilizing the fact that if you can't put it into a buffer tube then just accept that it needs to be externally mounted um, with externally um, having it externally mounted it's just you know, your blast is going to love you for it um, don't get me wrong you can run these if you do prefer to have um, buffer tube style batteries but just accept the fact that you know you're going to get um, overheat your system and you're going to run into a lot of um, performance issues just by changing your battery you'd be surprised how much better your blaster will perform um, but yeah so that's just a little bit of um, my personal opinion a little bit of knowledge a little bit of things that I've found out along the way by all means guys you got any more questions you got any concerns PM me uh, hit me up if, uh, if I get a whole heap of questions from a whole deep, uh, if I forget the same question from a whole group of people, then, you know, I'll throw up another post and just try and cover that so that everyone has that information at their fingertips. But um, stay, in, stay in touch, you know, always happy to help. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.